Hey guys, and welcome to the third part of the pectoral, scapular, and shoulder regions. And now we're going to talk about the muscles, their function, and innervation. So the first muscle we have here in the pectoral region is the pectoralis major muscle. So the pectoralis major is pectoralis because it lies in the pectus. Pectus means chest in Latin. So this is the pectus muscle, pectoralis, and it's major because we have a minor down to it and it has clavicular head and it has a sternal head the clavicular head comes out from the medial third of the clavicle and the sternal head comes all the way from the sternum and the first six costal cartilages and this muscle is attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove and i will tell you now how to remember the insertion of this muscle when you take the other muscles all right so as for now it is attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove so what does that muscle do? This muscle is mainly doing adduction, which means that it brings the, your arm medial to your body. It brings it here and it causes internal rot rotation. It can also cause flexion, but mainly adduction and internal rot rotation. How can you remember that? Remember that in the freestyle of swimming, we have two phases. The first phase of freestyle of swimming is made by pectoralis major muscle. And the second phase is made by the latissimus dorsi. And we're going to talk about it as we reach this muscle. So what do you basically do in the first phase? You are trying to put your hand that way. So what is that swimmer basically doing? He is internally rotating his uh, shoulder and he's adducting the shoulder. You can also say flexion. All right, so this is what basically happened in the pectoralis major muscle. What is the nerve supply? We basically have two pectoral nerves. And because this is pectoralis, it's of course the pectoral nerve. And because this is the big one, it's definitely getting from the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. What about the pectoralis minor? Because it's a minor, it will take only from the medial one. Okay, so it has medial pectoral nerve, it supplies it. From where it comes out and where does it insert? The pectoralis minor, it's undercover the pectoralis major, and it comes out from the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. So it's basically coming from the ribs themselves. And it goes all the way and it gets attached to the coracoid process. So guys, the coracoid process, it gives attachment to the, to the, um, to the uh, pectoralis minor and uh, insertion to the pectoralis minor and it gives um, origin to um, the biceps muscle, short head of biceps, and coracoprochialis muscle. So coracoid process is basically attached to three muscles. So pectoralis minor, it gets its insertion to the coracoid process. All right? What does it do? It stabilizes the scapula. And what is the innervation? It's the medial pectoral nerve. All right? It doesn't have a, a, a huge function. It's basically a uh, stabilization. So this is what the pectoralis minor is doing. All right. Now in the frontal muscles, we have a muscle that's called serratus anterior. Serratus means it is serrated in nature. Serrated, um, this, is, this is the appearance of a serrated structure. That's why we call it serratus because it is formed by interdigitations from the first eight ribs comes out as um, um, interdigitations, uh, serrated that way, serrated, and uh, zigzag-like, maybe we can say, uh, from the first eight ribs, <coughs> and it gets attached to the medial border of the scapula. All right, so the serratus anterior uh, uh, muscle, it's very important, and what, it, what does it basically do? It causes um, scapular Protraction. Protraction means you are moving something forward. Retraction, it's bringing it back. So when the scapula moves forward, we call it, we call it protraction and upward rotation. So you can remember this cute uh, girl. Uh, she's trying to reach for a high object on a shelf. This is exactly what serratus anterior is helping us to do. So the, to the, so the serratus anterior helps us to do scapular protraction. So this, this girl, the, uh, the, scapu the, 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 the scapula is moved from here to here. 
Okay, so it's basically protraction. So if that is the uh, scapula, all right, it's gonna move forward and upward, all right? So it causes scapular protraction and upward rotation. This is what the serratus anterior do. And what is the nerve supply? We can call it nerve to serratus anterior or long thoracic nerve. Why do we call it long thoracic? Because it's a long nerve. It runs on the thoracic region here. All right. So this is the serratus anterior. This is the pectoralis major. And this is the, can you guys see the serratus, how it is serrated? from the first eight reps, and it goes all the way to the medial border of the scapula, all right? And this is the function. So what happens if we have an injury to the nerve? And because, because the serratus anterior causes protraction and the rhomboids cause retraction, we're gonna talk about them now. If the protraction is lost, then the rhomboids will do retraction. So you will find winging of the scapula. So you have here a normal uh, uh, person and here a person with weak serratus anterior or here a person with uh, paralyzed long thoracic nerve. It's going to cause uh, uh, winging of the scapula. All right. So here the rhomboids are stronger than the serratus. So they are causing retraction. Uh, of the uh, medial border of the scapula because they are attached to the medial border of the scapula. Now let's move to the back muscles. We talked about the muscles in the front, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, serratus anterior. Now what are the muscles at the back? We have major muscles, trapezius up and latissimus dorsi down. Trapezius because it's trapezius in shape, all right? Uh, it's trapezius in shape. And it comes out from the occipital nuchal uh, line, uh, from the occipital protuberance here. It goes out of the spinous processes of C7 all the way from all the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae, uh, T1 up until T12. This is the origin. And the insertion is going to be all the way to the spine of the scapula, to the acromion process, and to the clavicle. Okay? So if I have... Uh, this is my scapula, and I have a spine here and a chromion, and I have a clavicle here. So the, the uh, trapezius muscle is going to insert into the clavicle, inner border of a chromion, and uh, superior border of um, spine of the scapula. This is how the trapezius muscle is inserted. And from the opposite parts of the same bones, we will find the origin of deltoid. So the origin of deltoid comes out from the anterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle. It comes from the outer border of the acromion. And it comes out from the spine, from the other side. And remember, that was the deltoid fashion. So this is the deltoid. And it goes all the way to the deltoid tuberosity in the lateral part of the humerus. So remember that the insertion of the trapezius muscle is opposite to the origin of the deltoid muscle, which is basically the, the spine, the clavicle, and the acromion here. These are the three bones that gives you, uh, from one side, the insertion of the trapezius, and from the other side, the origin of the deltoid. All right, guys, what does the trapezius do? Trapezius is a very important muscle. Trapezius muscle will help you to uh, abduct your shoulder. If you want to abduct your shoulder, you can do it by your um, abductor, by the deltoid, because deltoid makes abduction, but you will do it all the way until 120 degrees. The very first degrees of shoulder abduction will be by supraspinatus. Supraspinatus muscle, it, it, it helps you to do abduction from 0 to, seven, to 15 degrees supraspinatus muscle and then from 15 above you have your deltoid now in order to attain the last 60 degrees of shoulder abduction in order to reach the 180 thanks to the trapezius muscle so the trapezius muscle will help me to rotate the scapula laterally in order to to make it easy for the uh, humerus to go up 
because if you think about it guys if you want to abduct your shoulder you will find that the acromial process at 120 degree will stop you from rotating up it will stop the head of humerus from rotating so you need to move the scapula laterally in order for the humerus to go all the way to, to 180 degrees so if you guys look at the scapular rotation uh, lateral rotation of the scapula by 60 degree that will help you to make the final degrees of shoulder abduction by the trapezius muscle All right so trapezius will cause shoulder uh, it can also cause shoulder elevation because it, it has different uh, fibers it can also cause a shoulder depression if you look at the fibers here you can cause shoulder uh, um, uh, elevation you can also rotate the scapula laterally to allow for more degrees of shoulder abduction. So basically you have lost degrees of shoulder abduction, scapular rotation, and you have the shoulder elevation. Okay, these are all made by the this, this trapezius muscle. What is the nerve supply of trapezius? It's your accessory nerve, all right? Now, the next muscle is the latissimus dorsi. So we are talking about the superficial muscles of the back. We have two trapezius and we talked about it and we have the latissimus dorsi, which is latissimus means very broad because it comes all the way from the thoracolumbar fascia, from the iliac crest. All right. Uh, it comes out from the lower thoracic uh, 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 spinous processes from the lumbar spine all the way that is the latissimus dorsi and it goes all the way to get attached to the floor of bicipital groove we're going to talk about the insertion and how to memorize it later on and then so what does the latissimus dorsi do remember the second phase of swimming so in the first phase was by pectoralis major and that was adduction and uh, internal rotation or media rotation of the shoulder now here in order for the second phase of the freestyle of swimming, the latissimus dorsi will cause shoulder extension, it will cause medial rotation also, and it will cause abduction. All right, so adduction, shoulder, medial rotation, and extension. All right, guys. So, uh, what is the innervation of uh, the um, latissimus dorsi? It's basically your thoracodorsal nerve. 